Seth, thank you very much for joining us today on, on West Country. Um, new album, new tour, you're back out there again. How does it all feel? Oh, wow. It feels incredible, I have to say. Uh, we played St Andrew's Church in Plymouth last night. It was the first night of the tour and it felt wonderful. You know, just having a connection with the crowd, getting that response. Lots of new material we were playing from this new album, Make Your Mark. Um, but also those old songs, Freedom Fields, 15, that, you know, really important album. Um, and I have, it, it was just a fabulous, magical moment for us. You know, it was almost quite emotional, really. As, a, as an artist, you know, it's two years since we had played together as a band, you know, in, in, a, in, in, in a tour like this. So um, it, was, it was a big moment for us. And it's so exciting to be playing a full run of 18 shows back to back. <laughs> Um, tell me a bit about how you coped with, with lockdown then. As a, as a musician who thrives so much on live performance and that energy you get from it, it must have been tough to be, to be locked away. It's been really hard. You know, I've spoken to lots of artists about that, you know, being... I guess, you know, you, you feel shackled, you know? Yeah, you're so uh, restricted. You're almost, uh, you know, a prisoner in your, in your own home, in a way, because musically you can't get out. There's lots of writing, there's lots of output, there's lots of inspiration around us, nature. Those people nearest and dearest that we love, you know, they've inspired me in this new album, certainly, you know, and, but the fact that you couldn't get out there and get a response and a connection and play them in front of people, I think that was a real break in the circuit of music and, you know, I, I felt quite lost without it and I know others did, so, yeah, it was tough. Um, and how did that, that kind of process inform the writing on, on the new album and is there a particular theme or, or kind of story running through the record? I, I think in, in a general sense, uh, you know, when you're writing an album, you, you probably spend about six months, I would, you know, concentrating on it, um, but with this it was a much longer period, so I, I, I'll be honest, there was a a larger body of, of work of songs there, 30 or more songs to pick from and they range from you know those story-led narrative West Country songs that I love to write about um, to more personal um, you know introverted songs and, and some about nature as well you know exploring the area around you know that wonderful area around around uh, Devon and Cornwall so um yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's quite a journey, really. You know, we picked 14 in the end for Make Your Mark, and, you know, I think it represents that whole period really well. And um, there's a particular song which I love called uh, Higher We Aspire. I think I've got that right. Um, that seems to be a more personal song about, about family and, and foundations and, and the kind of the strength that you draw from that. Was, did that kind of come out of being stuck at home with everyone in the, in the lockdown? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Higher We Aspire is, uh, is a great place to play it here, actually. And it felt, felt the same last night in St Andrews. It's, it's a song about foundation, about the nearest and dearest. And having a good foundation helps you stronger to, you know, get further in life and, and strive to be, you know, better. Yeah. And I think it's an uplifting message, a universal message. Um, and tell me about the musicians that you've got playing with you at the moment. There's uh, quite an array of talent there, isn't there? Uh, some cracking musicians. I, you know, I feel really lucky to have... It, I call them the Pilgrim Band. It's uh, Benji Kirkpatrick, Alex Hart, wonderful v voice of Alex Hart, and Ben Nichols and John Blees from. Um, I, I grabbed him from the Robert Plant Band, so <laughs> it's, we're quite lucky to have him with us. But they're amazing musicians, yeah, and it's such a joy to play with them every night. Yeah. Um, Fifteen years, amazingly, since since Freedom Fields. How do you look back on on that record, and and what's it been like revisiting those those songs for the new tour? Well, you know what. When, when, you, when you play a gig for the first time, as we did last night, I wasn't sure if the set was going to be too long. Uh, and the idea of playing Freedom Fields in its entirety, back to back, is a, um, it was quite a big task, actually. But, and, and you never know if it's going to flow in the right way for a live set. We've never done that before. Um, but it had exactly the right journey. The crescendo happened at the end. People were on their feet. And it was, it was great, actually, the set this worked. Um, what do you think it is about live performance that, that kind of feeds your, your kind of soul, if you like? And, and what is it that you, that you love so much about playing live as opposed to, to recording a record? There's such different disciplines, really, I would say. You know, um, I, I love recording, I love writing, I love the process of all that. Uh, it's far more finite, but, you know, I, I, the, the fact of playing in spaces like this in front of people, you evoke a spirit that is so special and magical 
and you feel like you are channeling all these stories and all these songs and all these messages to these people, you know, and I've felt like I've done that for years with the song like Kitty J, you know, I've traveled all around the world from Svalbard to Libya to all, you know, everywhere. To, and I've taken the message of Dartmoor and beyond um, and, and spread the word. And that's where you feel like you are, you know, this kind of, uh, I, I guess, storyteller, you know, and you're, 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 you're passing them, th these stories on to people. And that's the point of folk music. But I mean, I think, yeah, there's a real power in performing live, you know, and, and I really felt it last night. Talking about the passing on of those stories, what is it that, that grabs you? I, I, you spoke last night a bit about, about how you were reading things during the lockdown and something grabbed your, your eye. I think it was about a whale rescue. It was, yeah, right? yeah, rescue of a pilot whale yeah. so on the lizard. Yeah. What is it that grabs you and thinks, oh, that could, could make a story for, for a song? I've, I've seen something interesting there. Yeah, it's hard to say what that is at that point. It's, it's more, you know, in that moment, whether uh, something grabs you, it can, be, it can be a little refrain, it can be a... You know, it can be just a, a general sort of poem that's, that's come to mind. It can be something that's inspired you when you're out walking, or it can just be when you're sitting, you know, riffing on a violin or a guitar. It, it's it's difficult to say where, where that sort of muse is, uh, you know, it, it comes from. But um, it's exciting when it happens, you know, when it starts to flow. It's a, it's a lovely thing. Uh, but when it doesn't work, it's really frustrating as well. <laughs> I have to say that. Um, what next for you then? Obviously, you're out on, on this tour, but um, are you sort of looking ahead to, to what the next few years holds and, and any plans for, for new musical projects? I mean, there's, there's stuff going on. Uh, you know, I'm looking to do some work next year, obviously supporting uh, Make Your Mark. You know, I was lucky enough over lockdown, I was working with Van Morrison uh, on his new album and doing stuff with him, which was really, you know, amazing to be in real world, working with those musicians. And, playing off, you know, I didn't even know Van Morrison played the saxophone and I was playing with him with a viola. It was an incredible moment for me as a musician. So I've been very, very lucky with things like that. But um, yeah, I think, you know, hopefully running with this band for as long as we can, uh, performing live, you know, and as far and wide as we can. Do you think, obviously, you've had a chance to look back on, on Freedom Field songs and, and do you think that it's, it's made you wonder how you've changed as a songwriter? and? And how have you developed? I, I can see a change in, in the new songs. They seem quite kind of loose and, and relaxed. And I guess that just comes with confidence and, and time, does it? Absolutely, yeah. No, I can, I can definitely see, you know, as a singer and as a writer, yeah, I've changed a lot. You become a bit more comfortable, yeah. You, you become more accustomed to it all, yeah. And I, um, I do feel like in this, this new record, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm middle-aged now, I've got three children. You know, they certainly come into the songs in certain places. You know, it's... Um, it's hard, hard to ignore things like that. Uh, but also, you know, when you look at Freedom Fields, it's very much rooted in a, a tradition, you know, and it was really special f f for that reason. You know, playing it last night, I realized how, how important, you know, the, the language I was using back then as a writer, whereas now it's a bit more universal. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, th I think it's changed a lot, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that's it from me. Thank you very much, Seth. Cracking. Great well, to see you. you again. Cheers. Cheers.